TV Corner. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Funcore TV Corner podcast, where we talk about Lovecraft Country, HBO's wild uh, fantasy horror extravaganza. Um, I'm Alex Kirschbaum in Los Angeles, joined by Armani Barone in Seattle. Hello, Armani. Hey, what's up, guys? I feel like I switch every time we do this now. Yes, the jet setting Armani Barone. Responsibly jet setting. I just want to put that out there. Responsibly jet setting. Very good. Um, well, we've got uh, episode eight, Jiga Bobo, um, to discuss. Uh, directed by series creator Misha Green and written by Green and uh, Ihuma Ofordiri. Um, so, following the police murder of her friend Emmett Till, a reeling Diana, who, if people don't remember, is the daughter to the deceased George and the still missing Hippolyta, is stalked by the magical Captain Lancaster, who uh, casts um, two homicidal transdimensional demons uh, out against her uh, in a curse. In order to save a pregnant lady, Atticus turns to Christina, his cousin, to help him cast a protective spell. Knowing that he risked death in casting the spell and having traveled into the future using the same Hiram Epstein um, magical uh, device that Hippolyta used in last week's episode to discover that his son, George Freeman, will write a Lovecraft Country novel, Atticus confides his, his frustration in his dad, Montrose. Montrose decides that he will cast the spell and risk the consequences in order to save his son, his grandson, and Letty. Um, Meanwhile, Ruby and Christina uh, continue to see each other. At the end of the episode, uh, and Christina is under the guise of William, is the name of the guy? Yeah, William. Um, at the end of the episode, Lancaster and his police goons beset uh, Lady's boarding house. A Lovecraftian beast appears to kill most of the cops, and we discover that Montrose's spell has worked. Across town, Diana is finally attacked by the two ghoulish spirits cast upon her by Captain Lancaster, while her uncle Montrose tries to save her. So yeah, that is Jacob Bobo. And Bobo is the nickname of Emmett Till. And we, we met him once briefly uh, in the basement of um, the boarding house when Diana and her friends were trying to summon spirits with a Ouija board. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just hopping in on this episode, I mean, this this series really tries to be, you know, shine a different light and perspective on like historical events so i think it's really interesting that they managed like you know have fantasy but also some fiction or non-fiction non-fiction is the truth yeah non-fiction as well um and i think i mean this is the story of emmett till is definitely one that should always be shared i mean just so this horror is not repeated and so that we don't lose empathy and understand the true gravity of what happened and I don't know where you want to start off in this, but I think um, just if we can just jump into like Ruby and Christina's interaction, um, Ruby obviously being a, a human being and a black woman really is affected by Emmett Till's that murder and the fact that at the time um, Emmett Till's funeral was an open casket so that people could really understand the horror of like what happened to him. And Christina coming from this very detached place of like privilege and just sort of being on her own um, sort of journey through to her immortality doesn't have a lot of empathy for Emmett until we get to the end of the episode when essentially the entire murder is reenacted upon her. And she's able to, we finally see, like really understand how intense and how serious this is. And I think it's really important to like not only it's one thing when you talk about the actions that were, I mean, the horrible things that were done to him, but when you actually see it on screen, albeit done to like a white woman who often, I think it's a state, it's a statement in itself because like, like almost instinctually through our own like brain whitewashing, um, we are able to sympathize more with like white bodies, especially in these kind of violent moments. So having it happen to like what is viewed as the most delicate form of whiteness, which is a white woman, um, you really understand how horrible, um, what you know, what what happened to him. It was so. I'm I'm I really appreciate the way the show did it in a way that it didn't show us what happened, but we're able to reenact it through another person who, uh, in some ways, for a lot of people, would garner more of a reaction to. If that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, I um. 
I I thought it was um uh, it was all well done. It was um it was weird because at that point we didn't know if her if she was immortal yet because she'd been chasing immortality, but but then when we find out that she's achieved it is after the murder. Oh well attempted murder. Also just nice to not see that happen um to a, a black body again because like Yeah. It's just I don't know. It's just all over the place right now. And so it was weirdly a relief to see it happen to a non black character just like just sparing us one time. So <laughs> Yeah from, from also, seeing that, yeah. That's also true. Yeah, it's a, like it's still able to show us like the weight of what happened without like having to make us endure seeing it through another like black person being going through this trauma um also i mean i guess we're in the comp the in the whole realm of like christina and ruby for example um i am do you think that christina again has any sort of actual feelings for ruby or a christina aka william or is still just like using her i remain deeply confused about what christina gets out of that relationship but I don't know. They've, they've explained other stuff now that I was having questions about that we both had questions about in prior episodes. Um, Cause I was thinking about how we were unsure of, um, you know, like Letty's pregnancy, like how that was going to play out or like how important uh, Hippolyta was the overall story. And it's and now it's like that kind of stuff has been answered for like where Atticus went um, during the, uh, when he used that device, the Hiram Epstein device. So it was just, yeah, it was, um, I'm assuming that they're going to tell us what Christina's end goal ultimately is with Ruby. It definitely seems like there's something going on. There's some intention. I mean, because we know that sort of she wants access to her, to Ruby's family, you know, through Ruby's, Ruby's connected to Atticus through this, uh, you know, Ruby's eventual nephew. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it feels like Ruby has like really like almost fulfilled her purpose to Christina. So at this point it is like, unsure whether or not this like this platonic slash romantic i don't really know how to define their relationship how it's really going versus like if ruby's trying to figure out how she he, she can also use christina slash william to like gain more access to magic i don't think it's really gonna work on ruby's favor but you know rooting for her in the end yeah i hope that she's not a, a casualty of uh christina's you know sort of ambiguous plotting so we'll see. I like their their crazy sex scene though, where um, <laughs> I uh, was, Ruby takes yeah. that pill. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, not expecting that. Yeah, it was pretty weird. Did they like time it so that she'd be shedding her skin at the time of orgasm, or like what what the hell was that? It was wild. Well, the thing that I don't get is I feel like usually, I mean, I don't know how often they have to sip the potion. They really don't establish any time rules. I yeah. thought she could go through a whole shift at uh. Her last job without Macy's? changing. So Marshall Fields, Marshall Fields. Yeah, so that would have been at least. Uh, I mean, was she working full time? I mean, at least a six hour shift. You know, so. Yeah, are we to assume they had sex for six hours? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. So they, I feel like they just really wanted this shot to happen and just didn't want to establish any sort of like address any sort of like time rules. Maybe it's not tied into time. Maybe it's tied into like the exertion of emotions or or something or bodily exertion i don't know there were, like, again like you said there's no rules so it's like they can kind of do whatever they want which is sort of annoying but but because they've established that the rules are not that that clear yet they there's they have license to kind of go in different directions i mean with, with how the they show in it. general they really don't have any rules so in some way yeah going back to your point it is kind of frustrating but also sort of like should we just like Sit back and relax and enjoy it. I don't know. There is an element with like fantasies where you just sort of have to like let let go with reason and just accept the symbolism. Right. Yeah. And again, like we got what at least two more episodes, so maybe all will be uh, revealed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of symbolism, let's talk about Christina helping Atticus cast that protection spell. Um, I actually was at at some point I doubted her. You know, like, are we going to trust anything that she gives Atticus willingly? But apparently we see that it works later in the episode. Yeah. Again, it points to, like, the ambiguity of Christina, which they mentioned in the episode. They say, you know, you, sh- you can't trust her. When, when um, I think Atticus tells Letty that um, he got, like, the protection spell from her, 
I think Letty says you can't trust her. I think. Not 100% on that. Or maybe it's Letty talking to Ruby about their, uh, about Ruby and Christina's relationship. Either way, I think Letty's the one who doesn't think that Christina can be trusted. And then Atticus also feels that way. So, so yeah, so we still don't really know. It seems like she's trying to help them, but maybe she's going to, like, pull the rug out from under their feet at the end or something. Yeah, I mean, we, to this point, like, apparently she's, we sort of, like, don't really see her master plan and slash the path she's taken. So right now, Christina does feel a little bit like a puppet master, but also her interactions with Ruby seem less calculated. So it's it's hard to say, you know, what her, if she just cares more about immortality and doesn't really care about who sort of gets what they want along the way. Like maybe she isn't completely anti-Atticus, she just is more like pro-Christina. So in the future, that might mean like there that she does in some way assist Atticus if it ultimately means helping her at the same time. Interesting. Speaking of Atticus, well, we're really kind of going, <laughs> we're kind of going backwards into this. Um, Atticus is becoming like has become a less and less likable character as the show has gone on, in my opinion. And this especially comes out with his interaction with Gia and Letty. Yeah, I agree. That was really weird, especially the the Gia part of that because like she comes in, she's flown in from South Korea, I guess to profess her love to him or or to say that he's in danger to try to help him. And he just immediately just yells at her and tells her to get out. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of it. We don't see her again. I, mean, I think and they're trying to establish her as a villain. he says that, like, but... what we had wasn't real. Like, what? Like, are you talk- Like, why do you think he's such a complete asshole? Like, I don't understand. Like, there was... I also don't understand. Like, I think this scene was also written in a way that, like, I didn't don't agree with as far as, like, Letty being, like, really upset with Gia slash, like, jealous slash, like, this is, like, his ex-girlfriend. Like, I don't understand the the issue yeah they're, they're both just like get the fuck out at like, different points like letty says it to atticus she's like she needs to get the fuck out and then atticus is like you gotta get the fuck out and it's like what? come on like you know she's trying to help yeah yeah it seemed like again the issues like really are between like atticus and letty with letty being upset about like him not being honest about gia which to be fair is a fair thing to be upset about especially when it comes to like some magical sexual interaction which I feel like is a lot goes plays along the same rules as like you know, if you have like an STD, you should probably be honest about it. If you had sex with someone and like their tentacles came out to attack you, I feel like you know you should maybe tell your partner, especially yeah. if you know that partner is gonna have your child. I don't know. I just feel like that, given everything that's happened this far with like magic and things happening, you know it's obviously a magical thing. I feel like you should talk about this. So Atticus is in the wrong and in the wrong for how he treated Jiha, who just like is just trying to help. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Yeah, they just kind of threw her in there, and then she's gone. I mean, they I'm assuming she's gonna. Over the phone. Yeah, I'm assuming she comes back to like. To be a villain or something. Maybe she'll hook up with William and then suck his soul out slash Christina's soul, and that'll be the end of her. There you go. I don't know. I mean, we don't know. Um, but I I guess I mean. She yeah she's gender fluid. Like, literally, she she changes genders. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. And finally, getting into Diana being haunted or stalked by these spirits uh, cast upon her by Captain Lancaster, who exists, though, I guess, well, it doesn't exist now, but, like, who existed to just be a douchebag, but so I'm glad that it's over. His character Is he for sure dead? Did he for sure die? I mean, it looks like he got a full arm slash face ripped off, but it's ambiguous i guess maybe i mean they wanted to bring him back he they i guess he could still be alive but he <gasps> wait i just thought about something what remember how like when ruby was in his his office she saw that like he had this like body in there that he was like this guy he was like keeping like who looked like who sort of like operated on and we saw that lancaster's body looked like he was sort of like frankenstein pieced together right maybe because we saw his arm get bitten off like he maybe he's not completely murdered and they just like do another like Hiram level like box surgery on him. Oh yeah, maybe. And just keep like Frankenstein monstering him. That'd be pretty cool. But I wish they'd also like in some ways like give his character like some more like purpose besides just like sort of being like an antagonist to literally everyone else for no reason. Right. He's, he's like a simultaneous attack antagonist to Christina and Atticus in the Atticus crew. Right. He's just evil and like he doesn't have much nuance or depth or particular motivation outside of just like consolidating and, and maintaining his power no i mean i guess you could say it's all motivation of all cops a cab but True. i just also feel like if you're gonna include him and give him like a name and like make him 
you know, he's not just, like, some cop snooping around. Like, he obviously is involved within, like, the Sons of Adam and, like, the whole realm of magic. So, like, we, I just feel like we need a little bit more. Yeah, I agree, for sure. Um, let's see. Okay, broadly, I think this episode was pretty good. I, like, I felt like it really tied some stuff up. Even though the GI thing was kind of awkward, um, we used to sort of try to resolve her story a bit and then try to like tie up the Montrose Atticus relationship. Um, so yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Interested to see how they wrap up this season now that we're getting close to the finish line. Yeah, I um, do you have any predictions? Um, well, Atticus has floated the possibility that he might die um, in five days, so there's that. Um, I think I think he will not die. But, uh, you know, obviously Montrose was open to sacrificing himself on Atticus's behalf. So, I don't know. We're, gonna, we're seeing another death. And it's one of our core remaining characters, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's uh, Montrose. But that's also kind of the more obvious choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think in the grand scheme of things, it would be interesting if Atticus does die. Because as Letty points out, like, literally everyone else around him has died except for him. I... I feel like Montrose is too on, is a bit on the nose. But it would be a good redemption arc, especially for, like, all the trauma that he caused Atticus in, in his life earlier. Right. I don't I mean, my prediction is that Christina and the rest of the group are going to actually team up a lot more going forward. And Christina will die before the end of the season. And William will profess his love to Ruby, who will then use her own magic, and maybe inherit the house. But isn't Christina immortal now? Or only... Or are you saying that she'll somehow get her immortality revoked? Yes. Yes, I feel like in some overlooked way, like, maybe she'll be, like, too cocky. Atticus will have read something in Lovecraft Country where he knows how she will... could be defeated. Yeah, okay. I could see that. I mean, that'd be interesting. I don't really love that Christina character... So I don't mind that. I don't know where they would go for a second season. Yeah, she's kind of... Honestly, I wish I almost wish she was William 100% of the time. I don't... Yeah, the, the show doesn't really have an amazing villain. They have, like... I, I enjoy those creepy spirit girls chasing Diana. Um, and Christina's so ambiguous that we don't even know if she's a villain exactly yet. And then the cop is, like you said, just so one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see where things go. But yeah, maybe Ruby does a heel turn or something. Yeah, yeah. All right, thus concludes episode eight of Lovecraft Country. And um, thanks, Armani, for throwing down in Seattle. Yeah, thank you. Uh, excited to see how this season ends. Wrap this up. Get some more answers. Who had that stop that knocking at the door? Let me in. Stop that knocking. Let me in. Stop that knocking. Let me in. You no had better stop, stop that knocking, knocking at the door. door. Let me in. Stop that knocking. Let me in. Stop that knocking. Let me in. You no had better stop, stop that knocking at the door. door.